Right. Go five, four, three, two, one. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Right, you guys are missing Charlie, huh? I mean, we're not. We know you guys are. Welcome back, folks, to another episode of This Is As Good As It Gets. It really is. Yeah. Just don't kid yourself. It's not that good. Um, what are we going to talk about? You guys were talking about stuff. Um, yeah, things, things, uh, I, I guess your limit, like, what? The breaking point. What would you go to jail for? <laughs> Anyone who fucked with my kids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's kind of like, what we got Like, seriously, topic. Messes. it's not like, well, you know, I don't know, like, somebody slashed your tire or something, like, you deal with your own shit, but... Molest, seriously messed with messed molest, molestation well <laughs> i'm sure their respective boyfriend or girlfriend has already done that so <laughs> yeah, i mean they are in their 20s now well jacob's not jacob's 19 there's rules in that too like i, I just won't tolerate you know like like a boy you know my, my daughter if she had a boyfriend would have to come to the door you know if they're going to go out would have to come to the door oh yeah the door i always had that rule too introduce them and you know they're not going to be in a driveway honking a horn no pimps honk <laughs> what's wrong with your camera bro i don't know bra so how would you bra. say that's more of a cultural thing for you or just an overall dad thing not no dad. It's, a, it's, a, it's a dad no. thing yeah you got to show manners no, I, I get that, show, but... you know, that i would tell my daughter that all the time you're not going out there they have to come to the door Yep. You put on your wife beater. I would sometimes be cleaning my guns on your waist. <laughs> I have been cleaning my guns in the garage and had them walk in and introduce themselves while I'm cleaning my guns. I've had that happen. Any but, of them get uncomfortable? Yeah, you could tell they were uncomfortable, but once we get in like regular conversation, yeah. they kind of go, "This yeah. guy's all right." I mean, this is a dad, you know, same. I'm sure it's the same when you guys met your girlfriend. Yeah, they, I, I understand that there is shock value there. Although, I got along with all my girlfriend's dads, um, except for one. And it was because I didn't watch football. He's like, who's your favorite team? I'm like, I don't watch football. And like, the guy never talked to me again. Yeah. So, I'm like, all right. Is this the current wife? No. No, the current wife's father passed away a couple of years ago. But he was always sweet. I mean, imagine this. You date a girl. You get her pregnant, you go through the whole pregnancy, whatever, you, you know, actually Tanya and I weren't together through the whole pregnancy, but anyway, we had the baby. When we decide two months after the baby's born, we get married. Then I go back to her hometown and meet her dad. How would you feel meeting her dad at that point if, that, if you were in my shoes? I mean, how old was she? She was uh, 18 when she got pregnant, 19 when we got married. Yeah. That's well, tough because not being in proximity, I think, yeah. puts a different spin to it a little bit. No, that's respectable, I think, to a point. He was he was super nice to me, super cool. And, and if anything, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say you guys have to be together. Or you know, if it was my my daughter, you guys don't have to be together. But that guy needs to pay up. <laughs> yeah, he needs to. Well, no, and that was that was the whole that was the intention too. Is that we weren't necessarily going to get together, and then when, oh well, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but when I was, the military was paying for Alexandra's health care. Tanya had no health care, so I said, "All right, well, you need to have health care, like well checks and stuff like that." And as a young airman making not a lot of money. Sitting here going, look at this freaking insurance rates. I'm like, let's let's just get married. If we don't like it, we'll annul it. So we just got married just a to business see, deal. And, Yeah, like sort of like that. Shotgun. And then China. yeah, and then we're like, well, you know, if we don't like it, we'll just we'll put an end to it. And here we are, we just hit twenty three years. So still freaking, figuring it out. We're still Do trying I like to, it or not. We're still trying to decide if we like it or not. <laughs> We've always been slow decision makers. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, I, I was nervous the first time going to meet like her grandpa. Her dad was not like in her daily life. She was living with her aunt and uncle who were essentially after her mom passed away, she, 
her and her siblings got split up and ended up going living with different family members. But her aunt and uncle were high school sweethearts, so that's where she learned a lot of that values of what marriage is about and stuff from because they're still married to this day. So, anyway, mm -hmm. but yeah, going back to that, yeah, there's, there's, I would be bothered if like my daughter had a baby, got married, whatever, and then brought the guy home to introduce him. I would be a little bothered by that, but yeah. I would probably say the same thing. Just because you have a baby doesn't mean you got to stay together. And that was our belief too. Yes. That's a whole different story right there. Yeah. You know, but you know, as a man, if you have, if you have a baby, you got to take care of it. You know? The baby but, should be the number one focus. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Pump, pump, pump the brakes, bro. A little too far there. Mike is taking care of two kids that are not his. <laughs> well, that's fine, you know. But he's a Three. father. I'm sorry. He's a father figure. Three. <laughs> That reminds me of my old man when he would introduce me. When I go to whatever bar he was drinking, he would always introduce me. This is one of my ex-wife's kids. <laughs> Every time. It's a good dad. Yeah. Same humor. <laughs> so what, do you, what about when you're in the bar and your kids come walking in? What do you say? I, yeah, I really kids. don't go into the bar, but yeah, they get <laughs> they get some of the same humor from me. I definitely get that from my old man. Less asshole, but uh, yeah. You're less asshole. Your dad was more asshole. Oh yeah, he's self proclaimed. He's yeah. Yeah, he's proud of it. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. That's cool. I didn't understand my dad's sense of humor until I became a dad. So, but he would always we would we dicked with. To be fair, we dicked with him a lot when we were kids too. So we, he'd be like, "Hey, go give me a beer out of the fridge in the garage," and we'd shake it up, and then, so he would get us back. He'd be like, "Hey, come here, go give me a beer," and then, like, he, we only got him once with that, and then every, every, ever since then, like, for a long time after that, he's like, "Put your face over it," <laughs> and he would open it and point it at us in case we shook it up. So we, did, we didn't shake it uh, up. Asian parents, so this yeah. is, uh, you know, did you a little more serious? Yeah. My, my dad so too. you had to learn how to play the violin and the piano and shit like that. <laughs> not being a doctor must have really disappointed. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, you're not a doctor. My, my, my dad's humor is, uh, what is the longest word, word in the English vocabulary? Smiles. Because there's a mile between the two S's. <laughs> 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 no, my dad didn't have... My dad had corny jokes, but never, never quite. They were never clean. They might have been corny, but they were never clean. You never swore. Yeah. Too. My dad swore plenty. Oh, yeah. Not a lot of F-bombs until we became teenagers. And then he would never, he wouldn't permit us to swear in front of our sisters or our mom. But when it was just us, he just really? okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was an alcoholic construction worker. So you can imagine. Yeah. There's probably plenty no, no of No cursing there, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> Regular church going, yeah. I remember, slower. I remember him getting into an argument with my mom about us doing the dishes. We had, you know, two brothers, so three boys. He was drunk, telling her, "My boys don't need to be doing no dishes, no dishes." Blah blah blah. Two nights later, he gets home and he starts yelling at us for not doing the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, we used to, like I said, we dished it back to our dad. One thing about my dad was if he couldn't find something, for, forget your Saturday's ruined. So get your ass up, get on your bike, and get out of the house before dad wakes up because he'll be like, where's my crescent wrench? And now you would know, like, shit, I was using it in the backyard while I was building something. Hammer. Yeah, as a hammer. Breaking rocks. <laughs> and I know it's back there, but you don't want to admit it, right? So then it's, it turns into... Clean this garage until you find my crescent wrench, and then boom, your Saturday shot. Mm -hmm. But then, in, in cleaning the garage, he's like, "Oh, my dad's got a bike right here. What's the name of that bike? Specialized. Okay, we're gonna get rid of this I and the Z. All right, we're gonna do the same to his helmet. So his bike and his helmet said Special Ed. <laughs> so he'd ride around town. He's like, "You assholes!" He always called us assholes. He still does. It's like, "Are you assholes?" You got to jack with all my shit all the time. So, you know. <laughs> but, and we would. We'd mess with his stuff. Like, as we turned into teenagers, we would do it just to get his goat. 
But as kids, yeah, watch out because, you know, dad was pretty mean. <laughs> so, and now it's like, yeah. then you become a dad and he's like, hey, take it easy a little bit. You're like, what? you are way harder on me than this. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, dads, man. And then we all become them. So, yeah. yeah. I'm a lot like my dad was. Oh, I was yeah. probably a little more strict, though. My dad turned more of a blind eye to a lot of the shit I did as a teenager. So, But my kids were much better than I was, too. They were much more well-behaved. They stayed out of trouble. My daughter, maybe not so much. I heard a lot of stories once she moved out of the house and she came clean about a lot of stuff. But my son was definitely, you know, he'd screw around, but I never really busted him on anything. Yeah. I caught him run. I saw him run a stop sign one time. And I didn't notice it. It was right here at the T in the road, though. And he just flat out blew it and hung a left turn. And the cars, are, you know, were headed the opposite way. And I, I look at my rear view mirror and I'm like, it's a 2001 Accord. Like, there's not a lot of these. Like, I know what the taillights look like. There's like six taillights on this thing. And so finally, you know, I just, I get home. My parents happen to be visiting. And my my parents and my wife are visiting in the front room and i'm like where's jacob oh he just went to his girlfriend's house i'm like oh okay fine and i get on the phone and i text him like hey look asshole next time you want to run a stop sign at least tap the brakes sorry dad it'll never happen again it was the first time i did it and <laughs> i'll never do it again i'm like yeah. well because it's only going to take one time for you to get that ticket because i ain't paying for that so yeah. and i'm like and I told him later, like, look, you're not in trouble, but if you do that, like, you tap the brakes, at least you maybe have an argument with the cop. Like, oh, yeah, I did stop all of my brake lights were on and whatever. But when you just flat out blow it, like, you have no case. So, anyway, I don't know. I got way more tickets, though, as a kid than he, he didn't get any tickets. And I had, Again, uh, I actually got a license suspension for having too many t- tickets. Totaled my truck. Oh, did you? Yeah. High school. Driving it all over the volcano. All, all speeding. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you only need to be going like forty-five on the island to be speeding, right? Yeah. So. I think that the max speed limit there is fifty-five. Still, it's so freaking crowded. But well, you gotta run out of land. On Oahu, it's so crowded you can't go any faster. What about Traffic three in the morning? Is it crowded then? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not as crowded as during rush hour, but sure. You really can't go over fifty five, even if you wanted to. So there's, there's, yeah. Well there's a lot of you you've covered this, but there's a lot of stupid unspoken driving rules there too. You know, like don't pass people even though there's a passing lane. It, it's uh, it's an island thing. Yeah. It's the locals. Because they're kinda like what well, what's your fucking rush, you know? Hawaiian time. Five o'clock. <laughs> Well, that's why. Five o'clock. You can show that's why we later. keep those people on an island. <laughs> but yeah, though, you know, especially uh, not so much on Oahu because sure. there's, you know, it, it's just traffic's nuts. Is that the most chaotic island out of all of them? Would you say? Yeah, rush hour, rush hour traffic is just crazy. Um, it is bumper to bumper, you know, the traffic and uh, but so there, yeah, I mean, you you can't. You can't overtake a car. What is <laughs> what is the time to get from one side of the island to the other? Uh, if it, there was no traffic. So, uh, what, what would be the mileage? 35 minutes, otherwise it's four and a half I hours. I think you, could, you can circle the island in like an hour and a half or something. Circle it or go across it? So, uh, circle it. Well, is there, a, like, is like, there a straight road that go, just completely dissects? There's the one that goes through the middle. It's right through the middle is a straight line. Straight, but you can. You that's can the Hawaiian that. Autobahn. That's yeah. the highway. <laughs> <laughs> the, the speed you, highway. You can go pretty much about seventy-five percent of the island. You you go around. So there's just one section where you can go to the end of the point, but then you got to turn around. So so you can't really circle. But I, I'd say about an hour, it's, hour and a half. It sounds like a cool. Still a cool place to visit, but I don't want to be in a hurry there. So I would have to be on vacation to go there. Yeah. I wouldn't want to live there. That's, that's why we come up with Hawaii time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no one... I don't, I'm never in a hurry in anything when I'm on vacation. You're sitting at the light. You can be the first guy at the light, right? And 
daydreaming and you look up and the light switches from green back to red and no one no one honks what? it's just rude you, no, honk, you honk it's, your horn for like if you want to take a fucking nap pull over and take a nap that's what that's <laughs> called no but i mean you honk to like to avoid an accident you're not you know I, I honk to wake people up. If you look, if you're at a stoplight and the light's green and you're not moving, I'm probably gonna honk at you with all 130 decibels of my air horn. <laughs> but like I said, it's the island. It's everyone's gonna be like, "What's the rush?" You know, unless you're a freaking. I got places to go. I'm not on the road. I'm not like you. I gotta get on the road to take a nap. I got I got somewhere to go. I'm not sitting in my car. I'll go in my bed if you want to take it's a nap. Not, but no place, nothing is that important. Unless, you know, you go into the ER trying to save a life. Maybe I am. <laughs> so people just go, well, <laughs> I know you're bleeding that, out right now, true. but this guy, you know, I don't want to honk. It's kind of rude. <laughs> yeah. You know, even the ambulance your driving. wife's having a baby. Just hold it in. We're going to go another cycle. <laughs> you know, Hawaiian time. I don't want to be rude. See, there are appropriate times, right? I guess beating the dead horse, but I guess that would be an appropriate time, right? If if your wife was in labor, would it be okay? I mean, yeah, if it involves you know someone's life, okay, health, and even the ambulance, they don't have sirens. It's no, rude. No. <laughs> <laughs> your wife little, goes into labor because the guy's taking out. Then he then he wakes up. He gets out. He helps. Yeah, that's a little bicycle bill helps yeah. deliver the. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Nah. Man. All right. Well, like I said, I would I, I would go there, but I I wouldn't want to be there. Especially now. on the uh, the outer islands. That definitely you don't want to pass a car. He's oh like, yeah, yeah. Like, like Kauai. And yeah, stuff you'll like overshoot that. the edge. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, because they're more. I guess they're more country. They're more. They don't want all the civilization coming there. They yeah, want it more old school. Uh, it's just considered. So, rude. what kind of industry is there? Is it mostly touristy? Tourism. Uh, I don't know what's number one. I don't know if tourists is number one or government because they they got you know a lot of military. It's kind of like here, right. but they got all branches, especially on Oahu. They got all branches of the military. They're like a base. You know, yeah. I mean, like here, I don't know. Is there a navy here? I think there's a small yeah Navy. something here. Yeah. I had a buddy who lived here in Colorado who was yeah. a Navy recruiter. <clears throat> yeah, they do have something because so. I know some people that have been Navy and they've been here. So. One of Jakey's friends is in the Navy, and he actually posted on his Instagram today. He's in Hawaii. He's like drive, cruising by Hawaii. They're just like it's like uh, well, on, on the ship. Are you guys gonna get off and hang out on Hawaii for a few hours or like nice. no? Yeah, they got also like Pearl Harbor, of course, where it's the Navy, Navy right. base, and then adjacent to that is Hickam Air Force, right. and then the middle of the island uh, in Wahiwa Schofield Barracks is Army, and on the other side of the island is a, a Marine base, a Marine slash Navy base. So, so outside of service, I mean military. I mean government. It's probably mostly job. like your grocery store workers, and I mean there's no like big companies there, is there? No. Yeah. No um, defense contractor things going on there. Or? Some. <laughs> but not like you would have here. Or yeah, it's not like here. Yeah, you know, they got all of them. You, you see the, the buildings. I mean, uh, I mean they'll, you'll have events out there. Uh, yeah, yeah, like Ray- Raytheon and uh, was that, that people that made the planes, the, the fighter jets, whatever. It's done like, Lockheed? Yeah, Lockheed. Yeah. Lockheed Martin. Um, I don't think they have that. It's not if they do, it's not that. It's big. mostly hotels and wedding services. Is that what I'm Pretty hearing? Pretty much, yeah. Tourism, tourism, and almost everyone in my family, like extended family, I think they most of them have government jobs. So, what would yeah. you do if you went back? Uh, teach uh, hula. <laughs> teach surfing. I don't so, know. can we get Work. a demonstration? <laughs> I'm go ahead and open a wet market. Well, so yeah, we got whatever you want. That means something Sorry. different in Hawaii. <laughs> oh, does it? Yeah. Fish, fish. We got I don't fish. know. I mean, government. I would love to have a pension. Have a yeah. Job. Yeah, that'd be cool. 
Yeah. I mean, where you work now, I mean, they pay you so well, that's like better than a pension. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You freaking guys, you stand company around and talk all day. You don't even do anything. Make like <laughs> twice as much as any freaking mate as the highest paid maintenance guy there. So I don't know about that, but I mean, yeah, can't really complain about the pay. So. Well, I don't see you yeah. starving exactly. <laughs> so you spend every day at your favorite brewery. I oh, think in the last see. podcast we covered nutritional foods. When you're poor, you can't afford the good foods. <laughs> <laughs> you get the stuff that. Puts the pounds on. Yeah, eating well is is uh, expensive. That's true. Oh. I learned that um, recently. Dairy jacks It's like me very up. recently you learned it. Right. <laughs> I still have a lot of bloat from all the dairy. Um, mm -hmm. No, like dairy, I can have whey protein, but milk, I can't drink the whatever... Ten dollars for two gallons at Costco stuff. Yeah. I have to get the organic milk. That's fine, but all that shit that's got all the hormones and stuff in it. And then I might have mentioned this before too, but if I eat grocery store like bread, I've stayed away from, except for unless I make my own bread. So I think a lot of people out there think they have a gluten allergy, but they're more allergic to probably the preservatives in there. Yeah. Then because I have a problem with store bought bread but stuff out of a bakery, especially stuff I make myself. And I'm using just like basic all purpose flour. It's nothing organic or anything like that. And I have no problems with that. Yeah. So Yeah. They have a uh, high fructose uh, corn syrup in them too. Uh, and almost everything that's packaged in the store. Is, yeah. But I, that's why I think that the the one thing I have a hard time doing but I still think holds true is Shop on the outside walls of the grocery store and you'll be okay. The so, outside walls? Yeah, because Very everything outside. on the outside is like that's where all your fruits oh, are, bread. your meats, your yeah. none of your none of your preservative loaded <laughs> foods. That's all in the center of the store. So anyway. And the liquor? The liquor's on the outside. Yeah. You know, beer and bacon are all on the outside. <laughs> We've covered the beer and bacon diet. <laughs> It's fully experimental, Thanks. but I bet yeah, I can good. make a, a bit of coin off of that. Tune right. in next week for results, right? Sure. Can. No, I can't do beer yet. <laughs> I got to get past this thing that I'm studying for, and then I can go back to drinking beer on a regular basis. Because um, it does just throw off my focus too much, regular mm -hmm. beer drinking. But anyway, we talked enough about diet last time. I'm going to switch gears. And ask you guys what is the current tv series you're watching mm. i think i already know yours i'm out <laughs> you don't watch anything <laughs> I, I do I you don't have time it. our podcast no. because it's so good and well you yeah, yeah. Editor. youtube no because i will binge if it's good it's a if it's a good series i will yeah. binge watch and then my whole my weekend's shot Yep. So I, I don't even want to start. But you don't know how to just curb it to like I'm only watching one episode a night. Well, and I don't get me wrong, there are episode, there are programs out there that will get me to binge watch. If it's good, I mean, the I, problem is autoplay. Yeah, that is a big problem. Well, I was gonna get up, but uh, I just started watching the first three minutes of this episode, and uh, I, I know me, you're done. I know me well. I'll sit. There. Yeah, it's if if they leave. Each episode with like something that's really cliffhanging, I can easily get sucked into a binge watch. Yeah. Like I did that with Yellowstone. Yep. When Yellowstone Watching that 1883 now, it's pretty good. I, I haven't done that because I don't have cable and um and you know, you would I have to buy Paramount, I think. Who do you have a cell phone service through? Uh T Mobile. Free. Oh, is it? Yep. Can you cast it to your television? Sure you can. If, if your TV set up. Yep. Yeah. T Mobile yeah. has Paramount. This TV on the one upstairs can take casting from yep. your phone. Just go on there, Google that Paramount T Mobile. Paramount You'll Plus. bring up the code or whatever the site. Shit. All yeah. right, cool. Yeah. Well yeah. I might just found a new series. And you didn't want Justin to show up today. Yeah. I know. Yeah, the info I you knew. needed. Yeah, he had the info I needed. So. I'm pretty good about watching one episode. I lately I've been I want to watch episode or season four of Ozark. Yeah, because that's I'm pretty on new. Season two right now. Yeah, and and uh, season four recently came out, and I was waiting forever for season four to come out. Um, 
But I got into this one called um, Blacklist. It's got James Spader in it. It was the guy that was in. Oh. If you ever watched Boston Legal, he was like. He was in those uh, John Hughes movies, huh? They're like pretty yeah. pink. Or yeah, yeah. One, one of, I can't remember. <laughs> or uh, was it Fast Times? Maybe Fast Times. Well, anyway, he. Uh, it was pretty pink. I can't remember now. I'll, anyway. I'll have to look it up. But uh, it's it's good because it's at first I thought it was one of those things where every episode's like its own story, and it kind of is like that. It's about forty minutes an episode. But every episode's its own story, but there is this larger, you know, backdrop story that's also being painted. Okay. So it's good, and I watch one episode a night, and then that's my TV watching. I, I had to get away from the news and everything else, and yeah. You ever watch Letter Kenny? Oh, dude, that, now there's one I binge watched. I just started watching that. Oh, my. I got it's sucked like into that one. Canadian Trailer Park Boys, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I binge watched that. I, bi I binge watched Trailer Park Boys, although usually I would get through about six episodes of Trailer Park and I'd be like, all right, I got to go do something productive. <laughs> you know, because that one is so off the rail that, yeah, you're just, you, you feel like your IQ points are actually dropping <laughs> watching that show. So, they have a rush episode. A what? Episode with Rush. I'm They've had multiple sure. people in there. I think they had one with Rush in there. They had one definitely with uh, Sebastian Bach from uh, a few episodes with him from Skid Row. Skid Row. Uh, yeah, there was uh, Snoop Dogg's been in a couple episodes. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, yeah, they've had a few famous people on Trailer Park Boys for sure. But anyway... Just figure out, see if you guys are tracking with anything. So you're not. You're like, I'm just going to go watch mm. the people over at uh, Lost Friend. Yeah. <laughs> so. He's and watched. The, and the dogs. Everything yeah. has been and watched. The dog. And yeah. the dogs that walk in. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. I got a reaction. Had a, a watermelon oh. slushy this weekend. It was good stuff. Is that new? Well, the, the What was the regular slushy they had? That shit uh, was good. I think, I think uh, it was a pina colada or pineapple. I think it's pineapple. When, when you tried it. Mm -hmm. so. It was good, man. Oh. So I got a reaction here. Get ready for this headline. Because this one, this is kind of, a, I don't want to say a fun one, but anyway. Happened to run into it while I was on the toilet. Uh, retired nun, 80, gets a year in prison for stealing $835,000 from school. An 80-year-old retired Catholic nun was sentenced to a year and a day in prison on Monday for embezzling $835,000 from the school where she served for 28 years as principal. Mary Margaret Kremper of Sister Mary Elephant of Los Angeles spent the, the money on herself, including her trips to casinos while telling parents nice. of students there wasn't enough money for school field trips or to fix awnings. According to a press release from the U.S. Attorney's Office of the Central District of California, uh, I have sinned, I have broken the law, and I have no excuses, Kremper told District Judge Otis D. Wright II. <clears throat> According to the Los Angeles Times, I was wrong, and I am profoundly sorry for the pain and the suffering that I have caused so many people. I apologize for the public scandal, the embarrassment, and the financial burden that I've placed on the sisters in my religious community, the Archdiocese of, Sa of Los Angeles, St. James School, uh, the parishioners, parents, and students who place their trust in me, Crumper said. Over a 10-year period, ending in September 2018, Crumper embezzled money from St. James Catholic School, according to the U.S. Attorney. Uh, as principal, a position she held for 28 years, Crumper was responsible for the money the school received to pay for tuition and fees, as well as for charitable donations, the press release said. Crumper controlled accounts at a credit union, including a savings account for the school, and one established to pay the living expenses of nuns employed by the school. Although she took a vow of poverty as a nun, Kremper diverted school funds into the St. James Covenant account and St. James Savings account, then used them to pay for expenses that the order would not have approved, much less paid for, including large gambling expenses incurred at casinos and certain credit card charges, court documents say. She falsified monthly and annual reports to school administrators and lulled St. James and the administrator into believe, administration into believing that the school's finances were being properly accounted for and its financial assets 
properly safeguarded, which in return allowed Defendant Grumper to maintain her access and control the school's finances and accounts and thus continue operating the fraudulent scheme, the court documents say. Grumper also ordered school employees to destroy documents during an audit of the school. Uh, on an annualized basis, approximately $83,000 per year, Grumper stole the equivalent of the tuition of 14 different students per year, prosecutors said in a sentencing memorandum. These funds were <coughs> intended to further the students' education, not fund Crumper's lifestyle. In their letters uh, to the court, several students and parents commented on how the school was lacking in resources. Crumper's attorney, Mark Br Brin, I think that's how you say his name, and his client has been under strict supervision vision at her convent. Strict supervision at her convent an expert report found that she had a gambling addiction, he said. This is not an excuse for what she did, Burns said. Uh, this is merely an explanation. So so the key to that story is Jesus already forgave her, so. <laughs> That's not the way that works. No? You don't, you don't ask for the money. You well, steal first, it and ask for forgiveness. Initially, yeah. I was thinking, well, $83,000 is not a huge paycheck. But then, when your food... And the roof over your head, and your lights, your utilities, everything's paid for. That's a fairly decent chunk of change, you know. She's going to Vegas and gambling it. <laughs> so, whatever, man. What do you make of that? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Hell, man. There's all sorts of ways to make money. I mean, you got BLM too, so you know. Nobody know, you knows you where that money access goes. To that kind of money, I don't, I don't know. You know. Temptations there, right? I mean, sure. Not, not, I'm not saying people are going to steal just because they have access to it, but it makes it easier. I think it might be easy to justify too, because you're sitting there like, I have to wear the same outfit every day, yeah. and every <laughs> altar is covered in gold. The church can afford this. So I got this, and I and I personally, I think that the the Vatican or whoever, whatever the top of the chain of command is there, should just repay that money. So. Yeah. Sorry, screen your nuns better. So, so I have a story. So this guy, I'll bring it up. I'm not. I'm just going to bring in the picture. This guy swears that his dog looks like Will Ferrell. Oh, great! This is going to be good. Uh, Are you going to put this in, or is it too graphic? This is dog. Where, where's the picture of the dog? <laughs> What's that? I thought this was hilarious. It does look like. Is that an actual photo from Anchorman, or what is that? <laughs> yeah, Ron, Ron Burgundy. But um, it, it's a cross. It's a half uh, poodle, golden retriever mix. Oh, there's a side by side. <laughs> but you know, yeah, I'll put a little insert. I'm not that is read, terrible. I'm not gonna read the whole story, but uh, I guess it's a, a female dog, Leela. But it's a labradoodle. I'm sorry. Has that dog gotten any comedic roles yet? Or? <laughs> See, I, here. I always thought that uh, Will Ferrell and Chad Smith looked a lot alike. Oh, so. you're oh yeah, they drum do off. those. Yeah, yeah, they drum off with the two. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was funny. <laughs> was that Chad Smith in the picture? I think so. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, uh, Chill Peppers released a single this past week. Black Summer. Really? Um, Let's look it up. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It, it, that's how I felt about the last couple albums, too. Like, eh. it, it, it's okay. It's all right. It's not like the... Uh, I mean, you you listen to Frusciante, he's just ripping off Hendrix. Well, he always sounds like Hendrix. Are they yeah, he's always, had a, he's always had a Hendrix, yeah, he said. Are they in their underwear in the video? Or? <laughs> no. What's it called? Black Summer. You only can play like 15 seconds. Of I know the rules. I think they like, changed it. I'm actually playing it just on some of the user stuff on YouTube. Oh. For content creators. Oh, okay. Like, like, you could do uh, reaction videos. It, even the lyrics. The lyrics, like... Um, not too catchy, not catchy enough. Yeah. You know what it is, is he's got to go back to the hair he had during Blood Sugar Sex Magic. <laughs> Anthony Kiedis does. This whole uh, 
mustache flavor saver mullet thing he's got going on. Yeah, all those will drop on April 1st, I believe. Yeah. Well, yeah, I got... It looks like that one. You know, I'm an all or nothing kind of guy. I do have a mullet going on, though, too, so... <laughs> Kind of, a lo- kind of a longer you, one like his. With a hat on, I feel like you, you I just have felt like running. <laughs> the trucker style hat. <laughs> you know, I have a big noggin, so to get a hat to fit my head right is crazy. But this this thing is big for my head. Forest? I can pull it down over the tops of my ears, which very rarely happens with any hat. Because my noggin is a quick massive. silver hat. That was a nice hat. You took it from me, man. I forgot to put my name in it, so Is you wouldn't Al's take hat? it. So, all right, we're in. The, we're about in a third of the way through. Let's see what it sounds like. Definitely got a more like recent Chili Pepper sound to it though. Yeah, they're more. They became more pop. Yeah. Less punk. More rock. But pop, the pop. the bass lines. I don't know about the well, song because I haven't heard the song simple. all the way. But the the, <laughs> the bass lines remain structured in some of the newer stuff. Well. It's, yeah. Um, Monarchy of what the hell's the name of that album? So Monarchy of Roses or Monarchy? Oh well, yeah. Um, by the way, no. Or that's uh, yeah, California Key. No, not it's no, after, no. It's after it's, California Key. After right? all those, uh, uh, I'm with you. No, Monarchy of Roses. Yeah. Okay. So that's a song. Okay. So yeah, what album? Let me see. I I would know that I bought the album, but I'm like, I don't know, man. It doesn't doesn't quite do it for me. Oh, I'm with you. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, that was with... A uh, couple of songs that, that, that I liked, What's but it name? wasn't like every song was awesome. What's his name? And Foo Fighters <laughs> kind of turned Click, into that, too. Click and Smith. Huh? Click and Smith. What is it? That guitars that replaced, replaced a John. He was on that album. I don't, I don't know. I didn't follow them yeah. terribly. What the the band politics, what the band was doing then. Yeah. So, um, Food Fighters did that for me too. Also, there's a couple albums where it's like freaking every song rocked, and then a couple of their more recent albums. Actually, not the one right before Sonic Highways, Wasting Light. I thought that whole album was pretty good. Yeah. So, but then. A couple before that, it's like one or two songs off each album. I was like, oh, yeah, I could blast this while I'm working out or whatever. And so I have to put together, like, then they came out with, like, a Foo Fighters greatest hits. And it's, like, all the songs that you want to hear. Mm-hmm. And they made it impossible to get on Amazon. So it's like, I got Amazon Prime Music. I should be able to download it. And then that's it. And like, oh, no, it's not available. Like, yeah. you bitches. So they, they have a new album out. It's a COVID album. It came out. Oh, the, their COVID album. You did mention that with uh, your interview with Allison. Um, yeah. And that's how you feel about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're coming out. Yeah, it's uh, they're coming. Here's the thing. I would defy it, defy every law. If I was a band, a famous band, and be like, "We're getting together in the studio. If you're gonna be a hippie about this shit, we'll replace you." And should be, as far as just writing a song, should be easy to do with streaming. I mean, you could still jam with your bandmates, right? Like, just FaceTime. No, it's not the same. Yeah, I guess so. You're going to have to play live sooner or later in front of a crowd. It's like, well, we made an album, and then it's like, okay, let's put on a show and charge people a butt ton of money it's like it sounds like crap yeah oh Megadeth's coming to World Arena mm. I think I think we already talked about their best albums Megadeth and uh, Lamb of God I think they're coming through so you a metal fan kinda 
you love you love your Wu Tang. I mean, I'll listen to anything, but I'm not. Well, you know, we already talked about you're not a concert goer or anything. Like that. No. Not not a concert goer per se. I've been to a few concerts. Yeah. How's that? I don't know. Who, I like, go to concerts four to five times a year. <laughs> the third drummer on such such band. Yeah. Yeah, I know more albums and which albums I liked, and then where bands started losing me. We talked about that with Tool a little bit, a couple episodes ago. Yeah. Um, Megadeth was like after Countdown to Extinction, because you can see the progression of the band, right? When you're in like Peace Cells, the other's like more raw sounding, and and then yeah. it started getting more refined with Rust in Peace, and then, when, when did really Mar- refined with Countdown, and then after that, I think it was Cryptic Writings, and you started losing me there. Mm-hmm. When did Marty Freeman leave? That see that I don't know because the Megadeth I know and love had Marty Freeman. In it. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's when they went downhill. Yeah, I don't know. Euthanasia. I don't know. Was it? Was, or was Euthanasia yeah. after after Countdown? Yeah. And then Cryptic Writings. Yes, I believe so. Or was Cryptic Writings sort of a box set of sorts? Yeah, I think that was like their greatest hits or something, right? And then okay. I think there was like a one or two like new singles on there or something. I don't know. I could have this all fucking wrong. <laughs> I don't remember. I, I do have that. I, I do have a computer here, but I'm not going to look it up because I like the challenge. <laughs> it's cheating. <laughs> cheating. Anyway, so Megadeth and Lamb of God, you're saying. Your favorite, favorite uh, rap album? Quick is the name. DJ Quick. You first. Um, rap. Ah, oh, jeez. Mm. Okay, maybe three. Oh, come on. Just go one. Okay. Just go one. Just go one. Jeez. Mine, mine was definitely my more formative years. I have to say Beastie Boys. But, uh, if you want to call that rap, I call it sort of this sort of old style. You could call it hip hop. Okay, okay, rap. Um, uh, rap or hip hop. That's cool. DLC, uh, Department of Correction. Make it funky. That, um, was the, the, the King of Kings was the name of that's not the name of the album DLC all for one I don't know I, I forget what it's called the, he, he, he came out with oh. uh, on uh, Ruthless Ta- yeah you're like, talking about the, I thought it was that's the one that he fucked up his yeah about before. about yeah. about when what year NWA late 80s no one can do it better. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that he had, uh, he he was the first uh, rapper that had kind of that that Jamaican. I mean, he didn't sound like a thick Jamaican accent, but he he kind of threw in that Jamaican sound. Yeah. In, in his in his uh. In, in, yeah, and he wrote a lot of N.W.A. stuff. Yeah. Him and Cube. So. Yeah, and then he got into a car accident, crushed his voice box. Can't speak. Well, you know, it's all. Uh, I didn't know that. You know, that ruined his career. So there is a lot of rappers, like smaller California rappers, West <laughs> Coast rappers that I listened to when I was, well, I, I would still say I discovered this, my favorite album then, but it wasn't from the same era. So there's like Dre Dog and these other guys, you know, um, and then there's like coming out with like, then East Coast start stuff started, you know, uh, reaching there with like Ice Cream Man and stuff like that, right? But I think by far, and I think it's just because of how upbeat it sounds. But what a lot of the songs are about is DJ Quick. Quick is the name. <laughs> like that's a freaking awesome album. Yeah. The whole every song on there is good. Yeah. So, um, but there's. Yeah, a couple, a couple of Spice One albums that I really dug, and you, you listened um, to it recently. Like, does it hold? Because there's a lot of rap albums that don't. I still play. got the disc. I think DJ Quickwood. Yeah, Spice I think, One does. Yeah. yeah, because well, here's the thing: they yeah. still rapped about a lot of the same stuff. Yeah. They were just had more of an upbeat sound when they yeah. rapped about it. It didn't sound so dark. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so. I forgot the name of that Spice One album, but there's two Spice album, Spice One albums I really dug. And then when Sir Mix a Lot really blew up, I wasn't so much into him, but Sir Mix a Lot Swass. Posse's on Broadway. <laughs> Swass was good, yeah. man. So Posse's on Broadway. Yeah. 
old the, the slightly older Sir Mix a Lot. But anyway, you I, I know you said before one. like big butts. Yeah, before yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I, I was I didn't I I thought that stuff was good, but not as good as his older stuff. But anyway, what about you? Uh, you know, honestly, anything E40, I love that stuff. Okay. Uh, probably one that I kind of rediscovered that I forgot how good it was was uh, Death Certificate, Ice Cube's Death Certificate. Oh. I was bumping that the other day. I was like, <laughs> man. Yeah. Yeah, you forget how how good some of these albums are. Yeah. And that's what, I mean, the, the DLC. So, yeah, well, that was, I had that, like, in high school, whatever, or when you were out of high school. Whatever. Well, that was so much to, but, go ahead. Uh, I, no, I was so I pull it up for my daughter. I was, you know, telling her yeah. about it, and I'm like, "This is fucking good." <laughs> yeah. I forget how good it is. Well, it's back when things flowed really well. I mean, it wasn't just a bunch of like grunts and moans and and you know words that didn't really rhyme. They were just the same word, you know, two lines later. Mm. Um, it, it's it's just back then everything flowed really well. Well, run the jewels. Even when things on the west, the east coast rather sounded more raw. That sounded a lot better back then than what, what a lot of stuff yeah. is out now. So, yeah, yeah, that Atlanta crew, all those uh, rappers down there, in the south, and yeah, yeah. all those guys. And... Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely some good artists in there. I would say so. Can't forget about R. Kelly. Hey, hey, he found his way to stay in the news. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> classics, hey, like too short, man. You know, it's like classic, classic, classic stuff. E forty is pretty classic crap. as well. Yeah. You pull up some twelve play when you got your lady around. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Damn. yeah. but it, but it all flowed really well, so you could listen to it and just even now listen to it and go. This is pretty good because it's. Yeah. I think well, it's the memories out. that go with it, right? It's not necessarily. I mean, the albums are good, but what were you doing at the time? You know. Yeah, getting in trouble. You feel good about it. Yeah, makes mm -hmm. you feel young again. Yeah. And then I had to. Um, so after I freaking told him my truck, I got a, a Chevy Sprint hatchback. <laughs> it's way better than a pickup <laughs> and truck. And then I had uh, more folks that'll two twelve the inch woofers in the back. Oh yeah. And, yeah, I was up blasting this. <laughs> The windshield the mirror is vibrating. You can't even see it from the view. I know. I got both of my boys hooked up. We hooked up stereos for them. It was a ten inch in the uh, Civic? <laughs> yeah, that's he that. But that was away. that was a Nick Nick wiring job, right? Yeah. yeah but I mean, his stuff always sounded good. I don't understand why he always did that because I would cruise with him, and you know we, we would go we would carpool to work. It was just on really quiet. Even when it was quiet because of the bass, it was loud. But why do you... I would have to turn it like... Why, why, why would you have something in your car you can't even turn up a quarter of the way? Yeah. So, so because I'm, I'm driving that, right? Fucking 53, or going to be 53. Fucking driving that, and I, you know, I have that thing fucking cranking, but when I come to a red light, I got to turn it down. <laughs> I, feel, I do the same thing. I feel stupid. People going to look over. It's like, this fucking old man. Had some uh, girls look, look over at, and go, look, thanks for sharing your music with us. You'll get a gun pointed at you <laughs> pulling up to a red light like that. <laughs> It's funny because when I was a teenager, I remember talking about that with my friends. Like, oh, wait till everybody that's listening to it now. All these 50-year-old white guys are going to be bumping Tupac. And I'm not well, that far out. Even now, we're I'm not, not that you know, far out. You don't, you don't want to be seen as a white guy listening to that in the wrong side of town. They'll still take it out on you. Yeah. There are parts of town where, Al, maybe you can get away with it. But <laughs> what, 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 what do you mean? Me, More like Booyah Cowboy. Trip. Me, me, and this hat right here, like it ain't gonna uh, happen. I'd have uh, I, I run the jewels. You ever listen to Booyah Trap? Yeah, yeah. I bet you did. <laughs> Fucking Samoans. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, they did a collab with uh, M N N N M N N. M N M. Oh, did Booyah? they? Didn't they? They might have. I didn't. Uh, probably heard it. I forget what that was called, what that album was called. Eminem had some good shit. Yeah, I like his style. I, I, I'm not a huge fan, but... There were a couple songs there, though, that got you pumped up, and you were like, oh, hell yeah. I, I can see how people like them. Yeah. I think, you know, yeah. it's, 
I, I don't like his voice, and uh, but but he does flow, and he 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 he's got some on um, you know. Did you ever watch Eight Mile? Yeah, I thought that was Rabbit. a really good flick. <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah. it was a good flick, and well, my dad grew up in Chicago. That's what they called the white boys even back then. Oh yeah, Rabbit. Rabbit. Hey, Rabbit. <laughs> my dad would tell you all about it. But, I, I can see why people are fans of his. And I, I can see why he, you know he was like the top rapper at one time. I, I see, I'm, I see his talent. But he's just yeah, not, it's just not your not, your bag, yeah, like no. your deal. I get yeah. it. So. No, his songs are some of his stuff. I agree with you on some of his songs. Other songs, they just flow the right way with me, yeah. and I go. This I, mean, I got him on my awesome playlist. You know? <laughs> yeah, I have him on there. Just yeah, because you got to have songs to skip, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> I got them on there. Like I, I, I don't like them. I just need them on there so I can have songs to skip. Something to I don't turn listen, down when you come. I don't to listen to white rappers. <laughs> so. Yeah. I don't my know. my daughter will upload some some music on here, and, and at work, right? We what does she listen to? Um, she's a metalhead, dude. Like my daughter was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she likes like like Deftones and stuff, but she it's a broad range. She likes pop and stuff like. Um, my daughter was more probably a little more metal than yours. She did like yeah. it a little. I, I would say like her metal. I mean, her playlist, Deftones definitely. Um, freaking suicidal tendencies, <laughs> uh, prong, uh, helmet. Yeah, she you know she helmet's had, just she had, like because I'm heavy. listening you know with, when I'm in the car and she'll sync up her phone. And just watching all these '90s metal bands. So, yeah, but, you, you but, rubbed but, off on um, You're like, you're embarrassing me. Turn yeah. it down. <laughs> Gotta no, turn it then, down at stoplights, honey. She uploaded some songs in, on on my phone, and, and like I'm in a fab, right? We can listen to music, and this is freaking Doja Cat. <laughs> Stuff like that. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe if you had the visual of her while you were listening. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. Uh, um, Going down, going down, going down. <laughs> Is that why you're in a good mood at work? All you're like, and and the uh, uh, bottom bitch. And I mean, I yeah, I, I I'm nodding my head, you know, like to the beat. It's like, all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to look at my playlist and what I've listened to. Yeah, Wasting Light was the Foo Fighters album that I thought was the last, where a lot of the songs on there I thought were pretty good. Um. So, what do you think? Because I've gotten into country over the last several years. I know you think it's a waste of time. But what about the people who gravitate to country that were metal, like Aaron Lewis? I think he's a very underrated. Oh, he's talented. I think he's a very underrated country yeah. music player. His, his songs are awesome. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not totally against country. It's just not my thing. Like, I, I've been to a Garth Brooks concert. You know? It's come so much further than Gar Garth Brooks. Yeah, I think I know, everything but, I mean, is kind of coming center. I mean, hip hop's coming to a degree. Well, I'm not coming. talking about Te techno the country. country so I'm they're talking about there, but they're blending a little bit too much. Yeah. yeah. So you go to the country station here, the local country station, and it's all digitized voices and garbage. Yeah. It's not country we, music we, anymore. We talked about this. We did the country. So you have to go to mountain country to get country music. See, I like I like bluegrass folk. And folk music. So, like Tyler Childers? So, I don't know who they are. Okay. But, but I like... <laughs> very blue, very bluegrass folk. I, I like, feeling. you know, because um, I, I think that the music's more interesting, you know, is not... Oh, well, yeah, he talks about doing cocaine and all sorts like, of other like, shit. You know. <laughs> so, it's pretty interesting. You know, the finger-picking on the guitar and all that, that I think it's, it's just more interesting. Versus just your standard country here on the radio... Like like we talk about it, like name a country instrumental. I don't think there is a popular country in, instrumental song. I don't think there is any. Because yeah, I can't think of any. Because <laughs> if you just listen to the music and take away the words, like you said, anything by John Denver. <laughs> I think he's a great songwriter. Yeah, but I mean that's not my thing. I'm not saying I won't listen to country. I'm just saying, no, well, you're saying it's not I, your deal. I don't mind listening song. to it. Even like Eagles, they're, they're too country. Do you think Eagles? so? Well, I mean, they, they, they do kind of run into that country rock yeah, sort that, of That's feel. why they brought in Joe Walsh to try to get it more rock. Yeah. More rock feel. Cause it's Joe I'm not. I'm, I think the 20 are the better. That's why I like Jamie Johnson. 
Jimmy Johnson's awesome. But and it's a lot of what it is is what his songs are about. And they got some good guitarists too. Country music. Yeah. You know. Some of that stuff is pretty difficult to duplicate yeah. on a guitar, but, but you wouldn't not, think it always. You know, you're not gonna I don't see people like starting to learn the drums and oh, I wanna be like that country drummer. You, know? <laughs> you wanna know <laughs> though so on basic easily as, as far as when now granted I haven't I've never been to one of his concerts, but the ones that have been recorded, like um the Central Park concert or whatever or listener supported but dave matthews band if you ever watch them mm -hmm. play you go how how the hell do these guys yeah they're they're, they're awesome they're yeah. Amazing, yeah you watch some of the, some of the guitar work dave's doing while he's singing you go how the hell do you do that yeah and i didn't think that was possible so very impressive band to watch if you watch them live if you listen to the music a lot of times it just kind of sounds like well, this is an interesting song. Yeah. You know, you, know you, you don't really recognize the guitar work or the violin work or the bass work that's going into it until you watch, yeah. or the drum work, until you watch them uh, that, play That would be a band I would like to see. I would I'd like to see Dave Matthews you band know, play like that. I'm not a, you know, I don't, I don't have their albums or anything. Yeah. So, country fan? I'll listen to anything. Honestly, I don't mind it. Yeah. I, I couldn't name, couldn't name one. Yeah, but you 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 would you but would hear songs. songs. There's songs. I know the words to song. Yeah, yeah. You, there's songs that you yeah. would go. Yeah, I know this song. I love this song. Yeah, I think um, for me, I listen to everything too. I have more of a tolerance for some things than others. So country music, I have a pretty good tolerance for. If it's hardcore rap, I have to. I have to. I can only tolerate it for so long. Metal. I'm still good with, but I prefer to listen to it when I'm trying to put up the heaviest weight of my life in the gym. Yeah. Um, that's when I prefer to listen to it, so I don't listen to it like while I'm driving because I might ram my truck into somebody. Yeah. So. I, I like the variety. I can't just listen to one type of yeah. genre. You know. So sometimes I'm in a Chris DeBerg mood, so, you know, and I need a little lady in red. Honestly, I throw on 106.3 on occasion just to get something different. A little in bit the car, different. Yeah, like some 80s or whatever's yeah. on there. Just, yeah. Just well, see, it up. looking up, I mean, looking at one of my more recent albums or whatever that I was listening to on here was the the 2000s gold, Mellow 2000s gold. <laughs> oh, what is that? Uh, just like Better Together by Jack Johnson. Yeah, well... Any Yellow by that? Coldplay, but that's one of those songs you skip. I never was a fan of Coldplay. Yeah, I could pressing. get through about two and a half Coldplay songs before I feel like I'm going to put a bullet in my head. So, what was that? Oh, camera's going. Powering off. I think it's overheating. As good as it gets. That's as good as it gets, folks. No, right. we still got this one. Um, yeah, but anyway, a lot of things from then. Any, Any rock set? Times Like These by Foo Fighters. Yeah. Um, because of you by Kelly Clarkson, you know. Did it overheat? It 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 was good because I don't know. It's a it's a it's a fairly decent, popular song playlist. But did it overheat out? I think so. Does it feel hot? Yeah. It's because it's nine thousand degrees in this basement. It's because did I leave that heater on? Oh, I sure as hell did. I gotta go shut that off. Yeah, I still gotta go to the casino too. Um, hmm. Oh, it's because you got that light pointed right at it and heated it up. Hold on, I'm going to shut this heater off. Thanks for reminding me. You should have reminded me earlier, bro. 600 next next month. Yeah, no shit. There. Took care of that. Well, this basement will get cold, but I forgot. We got a lot of body heat when we're down here. Whole lot of body. Yeah. Oh, great. This is where I was going to put up an intermission sign, so stay tuned, folks. <laughs> Let's all go to the lobby. Yeah, I guess we'll close it off. It's been, it's been like 60 minutes. All right. Now that we've insulted all genres of music. Yeah, exactly. All right, I guess we'll close it. I was just going to go like to the... <clears throat> It's just intermission music. Oh.
Alright. Oh, you gotta figure it all out now. Is that one back on? Okay. Welcome back, folks. <laughs> Technical difficulties. I guess yeah. we'll close this out. Alright. Okay, cool. Um, any, any, any parting words? Yes, next week. Uh, I don't know. Be safe. Charlie may or may not be here. Yeah. Charlie may or may not be here. Um, yeah, it's going to go on three weeks. Well, I hope he's here. Kind of missed the guy. Four weeks? On, what are you talking on, uh, about? He's on site oh. doing Tsunami 2. <laughs> he's, he's on set with Tsunami 2. Yeah. And Lone Ranger part. What part are we on with Lone Ranger? Part three? I don't know. <laughs> all right. Well, all right, kids uh, out there, stay good. If you can't be good, be safe. So right. see you next time. Bye. That's see as good guys. as it gets. That's as good as it gets, good brother. As it gets. thing we can do that I found on the toilet. <laughs> in the toilet? In the toilet. Oh, yeah. the toilet? Look at this turd I got. This is my sticker. Right That's on. Awesome sticker. That's funny. What were you guys talking about though? Um killing. There there's things you'd go to jail for. Yeah. Especially Oh well that actually like, it does like play into one of my with our kids a little bit if something yeah. happened. Or... Like you found out your one of your your daughters or was molested. You know? Was hanging out with Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All he did was sniff her hair. That's okay as long as he paid me enough hey, money for that. If I'm getting paid, Michael Jackson can babysit my kids anytime. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry, kid. This is called taking one for the team. All right. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one.